sometimes when you acquire, or this has been my experience many times, acquiring a, a used machine, especially a vintage machine like this, this saw from uh, maybe the 1930s sometimes, is that it's missing parts because some Nimrod took off or threw away important parts and there's really nothing you can do except acquire another saw and try to try to cannibalize parts off or get into really elaborate things. So uh, then you have to look at like how you're going to fabricate parts. In this case, this saw was missing the extension table for the fence, which I don't know if you can see it back here, but I made that out of uh, cast off cast iron uh, table saw top from a craftsman table saw that I cut up and that actually turned out pretty well or acceptable for the time being. Um, <coughs> and the other thing that this saw was missing, and you know the reason I, I think this is a great saw is because, well partially because uh, because of this rolling table. I wouldn't have uh, acquired it otherwise. Unfortunately, for some reason, maybe because it was mounted with an outfeed table on the left, you know, it was, it was mounted so as not to use the rolling table, some Nimrod took the, uh, the, the retainer bearings off. So what would happen is, is there was a point of no return with, with the table where it could go diving off the end. It's not, it's, you know, it's kind of older technology than today's sliding tables and so it's not really um, bound in there. And so these, these, these blocks have bearings mounted in underside, which keeps keeps the table from diving off. And this this rolling table weighs, I don't know, maybe 200 pounds. I mean, I could I could just kind of lift it, move it, but it's pretty it's pretty heavy to maneuver around um, when it's off the saw. So it's it's a very heavy piece of iron. So these were missing, and I, that that's pretty irritating. Uh, I didn't know how to approach that, so I thought about it a bit, and then I started looking for. Well, I found out that on radial arm saws, they have the kind of uh, uh, adjustable po posts for bearings, uh, and I had I had an old radial arm saw that was knackered, um, and so I took that apart and I got two of the posts out of, out of the out of the uh, radial arm saw carriage and was able to. Then I uh, I bought some three quarter inch aluminum plate on uh, on eBay and had it shipped to me. Which is, you know, I could go to a metal supply place, but considering the time of going down there and, you know, gas money and stuff like that, I think it's maybe just cheaper to buy smaller pieces of aluminum for projects like this on eBay. Um, and I was successful in getting the holes exactly where I wanted it, wanted them. Now I have some experience in making parts, and with the most essential tool in getting those holes ex exactly is. Ex is a spring-loaded center punch, and what what happens is you you usually with aluminum. What I'll do is I'll scribe lines by scratching lines into the aluminum itself for exactly where I want this, the holes to be, right? And then I'm able to kind of gauge the the center punch in those lines, sort of like uh, sort of like like putting a, ch a chisel in a gauged line when you're you're pairing dovetails or something like that, and then I punch it down and it's got a spring loaded thing and it makes it it makes a divot in the aluminum then I look and see if the, the divot's exactly where I want it it's usually a little bit off and then I apply English I, I take the I put it at an angle and I do it again since aluminum's relatively soft um, the center punch I'm able to kind of steer where the divot is and I do that once or twice and usually I get the divot pretty close to where I want it and I've gotten some practice with this and this is the method that works for me and so I get those holes dead on. I mean, well, maybe not dead on, but close enough that there's really no play. And I got those exactly where I wanted. Now, in terms of the bearing, the, the cam uh, camshaft bearings, uh, th there's only about three millimeters of adjustment on those. So I had to make a really educated guess about where that hole was going to be. And as it turned out, uh, it turned out right. And um, I think I left I think I just went with, uh, uh, well anyway, how I marked it out is like not something that's likely to ever come up for you, but uh, I'm going to take this off so you can see what I've got. And really, I realized that if, if I failed to get, get, to, to get the holes exactly where I wanted, I knew that I could use uh, round files and kind of, you know, I could finagle it. If I got this wrong, I could I could tap a screw in underneath to push it up. I could, you know, elongate the hole and then use a screw to keep it from sagging. 
stuff like that. But as it turned out, my instincts and my craftsmanship with making these metal parts is getting good enough that they both turned out right. Um, so here's the bearing salvaged off a radial arm saw. And because I have a metal lathe, I was able to turn down the bolt to less than an eighth of an inch thick. And it was, it was clo closer to a quarter inch thick. So I turned that down. So that gives me a little extra clearance there. Um, there would have been other approaches. I could have left the bolt, um, th this, this end sticking up as much. And I could have added a spacer here, for example. That would have been one approach. Or I could have, you know, excavated this metal here. But this turned out well enough. These bearings are kind of knackered for machine, for, you know, high speed use, but for, for just something like this, where they, where, where they're just there to keep the table from diving off, they, they seem to be working adequately. And on the back, you can see the layout lines that I scratched into the aluminum to get the effect, to get the position that I wanted. Um, so th this is what I did to, uh, to fix this this uh, rather vexing machine problem with this old Tanowitz JS rolling carriage sliding table saw, and for this seems to be working working well. The saw is actually not under power yet. I have a switch on order because it uh, it came with the wrong with the wrong kind of magnetic starter and it was making some noise. So I hope this, you know, inspires you to uh, consider that even if a machine is missing some parts, you can probably figure out a way to to make make the parts without too much trouble. And it, these really only took me a few hours to, to to do, and I was concerned that I would mess up the drilling. But like I said, as it turned out, they turned out very very well, and uh, they're they're going to be functional parts for the saw. I hope you enjoyed the video.